client install. So there are various method you can use to install clients on your SCCM system center configuration manager. So one method is manual where you have to run a command and you can install client on your device. And there's another method is GPO. You can create a group policy and then you can use that group policy to install client. And the other method is client push install, which is very popular. And uh, all you have to do is open your configuration manager console under devices. Uh, you have to find the device. You have to right click, click on install client, next, 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 and done. That simple, that easy, only if you have done the groundwork. So in this video, we are going to look at what is that groundwork, how to check the firewall rules, SCCM settings, what settings you need to do in your SCCM console, on your configuration manager console, and also uh, what software you need to check the logs and uh, where to find these logs. So we're going to discuss about that. So first of all, we will discuss about firewall rules. Let's get started. This is Jay Singh from Technex Solutions. All right, to start with, we have to log into our domain controller where we will create firewall rules for our clients. So what firewall rules we need? So let's have a look at the firewall rules. So very first rules we need for file sharing. On the client hand side, we need file sharing rules so that a client can share files with SCCM and SCCM can share files back with our clients. Okay, and second rules we need WMI rules. So WMI is uh, the method. WMI has functions which SCCM will use to get some information out of our clients. And um, there's another few rules we will add, and we will discuss about those when we add them. Let's get started. I'm logging on to my domain controller. So my domain controller is technex-dco1. Could be different in your case. So let's just open DCO1 and in DCO1 uh, go to tools and uh, we will go to group policy management. In group policy management extend the tree and uh, we will extend domains, our domain and we will find the computer OU. In my case the computer OU I created was Technex Computers. So it sits here Technex Computers as one computer I think but we will add more if we have to right click create a GPO and I will name it SCCM client rules click on OK and right click edit we will go to policies make sure we go under computer configuration so we have policies we have Windows settings then we will go to security which is here extend that as well and under security we should have Windows firewall with advanced settings here with advanced security extend that and Windows firewall with advanced security alright we will extend that further so we will have inbound rules and outbound rules so in inbound rules we will create few rules so we will add in inbound rules right click new rule and this is predefined. We will select file and printer sharing. Select that and go next. Everything is selected. I'm happy with that. Click next and allow this, allow the connection. Finish and this part is done. And again, we will add more. Click on new rule, predefined. We will add WMI so that our SCCM can talk to our clients our devices and uh, use WMI queries. So WMI is here, Windows Management Instrumentation. Okay, next, the three rules selected. Next, allow the connection and finish. Okay, so this part is done in inbound rule. So one more rule we will add is TCP 2701. So the reason why we are adding this rule so that SCCM can come and talk to our client remotely if you want to enable remote control from your SCCM client settings we will have a look at that soon so in inbound right click new rule and uh, port based next and it is TCP specify the port which is 2701 and click next allow the connection next we will need it for domain profile only next and name it allow SCCM remote control and that's about it click on finish so inbound rules are done so now we are going to add 
outbound rules okay in outbound right click new rule we will select again predefined and uh, file and print sharing printer sharing click next everything is selected next allow the connection finish okay so we have added inbound and outbound file and print sharing so that our device can read files and our SCCM can put files back on our device so it's back and forth but WMI is just from our Windows um, from our SCCM server side only so SCCM server can run its own queries to our uh, Windows machines or end devices so this part is done and also we are going to add one more rule new rule and this is port based next and this is TCP as well one zero one two three and this port is needed by our SCCM server for our management point to send client notification once we install software center once we install client it will send notifications to the end devices so this is why we need that port and we will add that click next and allow the connection and this will add for the domain as well okay next I will name it SCCM client notifications once that done click on finish so that part is finished and also on our SCCM server we need to open that one port for our SQL server 1433 and 4022 we don't have to use group policy for that because we have only one SCCM server if you have multiple servers maybe yes we use GPO but we can add that manually we will go to our SCCM server now and uh, we will add these rules in our SCCM server so in search bar search windows firewall with advanced security and in inbound rules right click new rule and uh, this is a port based click next and TCP support is 1433 and 4022 okay and click next allow the connection next domain private public we just need it for domain click next and SQL server port I will copy that finish you can see SQL server port and then in Adburn rules it's the same thing click new rule port next TCP and ports are 1433 4022 and if you have changed these ports you have to put these ports here whatever the ports you have changed I kept everything default in SQL Server so I do not have to change these ports so click next and allow the connection and then you can name it and then finish it okay so I will just create it for domain one small change I would like to do because you have added these uh, two rules at the moment in, in one is inbound second is outbound so if you click on inbound you see SQL Server port the rule that you added or the name you have given right click and go to properties and click advanced and allow it for everything actually so just in case if something is not on domain and you still you like your SQL Server to uh, communicate with so allow everything click apply and OK same thing we do for the outbound rules uh, right click and click on properties and then go to advanced and uh, just tick these two boxes um, so at the moment all three are ticked domain private and public and click apply okay so all the firewall ports are done so the next part is we have to make some changes for the client settings so the client settings changes we are going to do on our SCCM server where we are at the moment okay so also we have to test the uh, GPO because of the Windows firewall ports that we have opened open uh, log into your computer Windows computer so my case is PC-01 let's just test the Windows firewall rule have they come into effect or not on our PC-01 where we have applied the rule you can do um, GP update space forward slash force or you can restart the device and it will get the latest group policy so I'm just restarting the device so let's just make sure that it gets the right rules okay so I logged into PC-01 and uh, logged in as administrator and opened uh, Windows Defender Firewall with advanced security and if you click on inbound rules you can see allow SCCM remote control group policy has it has been applied so it looks good and we go back to our SCCM server I logged in as administrator 
but it doesn't affect the client installation if you're logging in as administrator or you logging in as a or just standard user so let's go back to our SCCM server so which is technex dash seo one so click on administration and uh, extend it and then we go to sites under sites you will see client installation settings this is set this setting is very important click on client inst push installation so click under accounts here we have to specify an account according to uh, Microsoft recommendation this account has it does not have to be domain admin it has to be local admin on the machine it does not have to be domain admin account it can be just a normal standard account so but it has to be a local administrator on the actually machine so it can uh, access C$ dollar on the machine we will test it soon so client push install so here we are using just SCCM account as you know this is just lab environment and uh, I will click on new account and username click browse and SCCM check names it check the name click OK and type in password twice and uh, click verify so here we will browse to PC-01 backward slash C dollar so that's a remote path test connection connection was successfully verified if your PC name is something else you can type in your PC name make sure you type in two backward slashes then PC name backward slash C dollar okay if it can access this path on that computer then it will be able to put the files there put the required files there okay and then click OK and then apply and OK alright th this part is done now we are ready to install client and other part is I'll show you if you go back to your PC01 in PC01 open uh, file explorer and open this PC under local disk C if you double click that go to Windows if you look here there's no CCM setup folder here okay as soon as we will in, we will push the installation here we will see um, CCM, CCM setup folder as you know we have we are logged in as administrator if we go Windows R backward slash backward slash technex dash SCO1 we should be able to view these shared files on our from our server okay and if you click on SMS underscore tech tek or SMS underscore your site name double click on that go to tools and then we need CCM trace okay um, copy that on the desktop it's here we go back and there are logs file go to logs and then open CCM log okay uh, CCM log is here so right click open with CCM trace what we'll do is we'll open CCM trace first yes so we will make it default um, log viewer so now if you go back go back open this it will open this log file for us so apart from this we will look at this CCM log file apart from this open uh, task manager on your PC01 or on your PC where you would like to install client and in here click on more details and under details you will see a file running that would be CCM setup file as soon as we push we will see that file running here okay so let's go back to our server okay and go to assets and compliance click on devices we can see PC-01 device here okay client no nothing installed right click click on install client click next always install client uninstall client if there's any uh, we click no and uh, we just you pick this option install the client from a specified site click that we have this site click next and this is the summary click next test the progress close so let's go back to our PC PC01 
and here we should see CCM setup running okay so details we go to local disk C windows CCM setup folder here and details CCM setup XE is running and let's go back to our log file in CCM trace it will say the push install request sub submitted successfully and uh, machine name is PCO1 so WMI you can ignore this error for now and uh, it's verifying so you can see started service CCM setup here okay so completed request and deleted it let's go back so CCM setup it will change to CCM exec shortly so I checked the log file and it's uh, it's about like five six minutes I've been waiting I thought it will install then I checked the log file and it gave me an error failed to get DP locations so let's fix that error so we'll go back to our SCCM server and in our SCCM server we'll click on administration and then click on distribution points so that's the distribution point right click on your distribution point by the way that distribution point options comes under security okay right click on your distribution point you will see your distribution there by default and click on properties and in properties under content we have client manager package which is good and content validation we don't need that boundary groups we have to add a boundary group here okay so the boundary group we created earlier we will add it here technex boundary group all right so click OK its boundary group sits here and hit apply and OK so this is done we'll go back to our assets and compliance select devices PCO1 right click install client we will push the client again there's no harm pushing it again uh, it's gonna try anyway um, to install but we will install it again and install from specific sites we have that and click next and next and done close that let's go back to our PC01 and uh, it will try again to install it let's have a look what it does now okay it created the job again here CCM setup it's running and uh, let's have a look what it does okay so now you can see here in task manager CCM it was set up change to restart and we have CCM exec here which is a good news that our client push install actually works so we can see CCM exec is changed from CCM setup and uh, if you click on Windows logo you should see um, sometime soon you will see software center option available here so it's just finishing up now let's have a look what it says now about our PC01 let's just uh, click on users click on devices and in PC01 you can see client installed yes and it gives you the site name as well and the primary user it's not reporting back yet and we will see client activity uh, which is here next to site code uh, it will say active inactive available and uh, primary users as well once it gets uh, one SCCM will retrieve enough information it will populate that option as well so we'll go back to our PC01 and see if we have um, software center coming up here so software center option is available if you click on that it will load the software center option and uh, here okay and in our SCCM server and I would like to mention that in our SCCM server if you click on administration and uh, there will be client settings this is a default client settings if you right click go to properties uh, we have different options here which we can change which we can manage okay here the remote tools um, we can actually enable that at the moment it is disabled uh, if you go configure setting enable remote tools for domain and click OK and um, so that's about it and apart from that we can actually 
So under hardware inventory, you can see organization name displayed in software center. So let's just do it uh, Technex Solutions and hit OK or apply. So right click, go to properties and um, now in our software center before it was coming blank. If we go back to PC01, we will see software center. See it says IT organization. Uh, soon it will show Technex solutions. If you open command prompt and type in uh, control space SMS CFGRC and hit enter, it will load configuration manager properties. Okay, and you can open control panel and in control panel uh, change the icons to large icons you will see configuration manager here okay you can click that it will open the same window alright so in here if you click on configurations any configuration you will see here actions you can run these different actions in general you can see management point currently intranet within the network and version number of the client you can see here if under actions whatever the policy is available here you can run from here if you click on if you select any policy for example let's just run um, user policy run now if there's any user policy it will run that policy machine policy it will run that policy as well and click OK to close it so let's close this as well let's close our software center as well let's open the software center again to see if uh, it, we can see Technex Solutions change. Okay, so as you can see now Technex Solutions is coming up here. And also let's test our remote tools as well. So we'll go back to SCCM server and let's cancel this. Um, before we cancel this actually, go to properties and um, let's have a look at remote tools. So we have option here, allow remote control of an un computer which is yes which is good let's click OK go to assets and compliance go to devices so that's the computer where we're going to want to connect um, right click and then you can start remote control okay let's just do that so connecting to the host asking the remote user to allow remote control so we go back to PC01 approve and let's just minimize this we go back to our server SCCM server as you can see here this is how you can connect remotely with the help of SCCM remote control tool um, so this is great uh, our remote control tool is working as well let's just close it that's all for this video give this video a thumbs up if you feel like this was informative for you and uh, also subscribe to my channel to show your support so I can create quality content for you in future as well. See you in the next video.